Hey guys, and welcome back to Building Habits. In case you're new here, this is a series where I introduce a set of rules you should try and follow in every game you play. The goal is to teach you strong fundamental principles that we will improve upon as we go. This series is my personal take on how to improve in chess, starting from 400 ELO all the way up to 2000 ELO and beyond. I'm gonna choose a series of rules that I have to follow what you might notice is that you will miss chances to play winning moves. That's okay. The goal here is to focus on the fundamentals and I'm trying to get you guys to build good habits and play high percentage moves that will help you increase your rating. So we're 1300, that was the rating we got to um, at the end of last stream. Bishop c4. I don't think we I don't think we've seen bishop c4 before. So one thing is I don't want to play this because after knight there. Right. I, I need to play knight c6, but then I'm gonna get uh fried livered. So I think I'm gonna play here. Followed by Bishop here. Okay, c3. C3 is probably gonna hurt me. Let's see though. Dan beat you three straight games, Cartman? Maybe it's because Dan has the habits. You never know. I, I'm going to play here. Oh, okay. I thought I thought he was maybe going to uncork something. I, I, thought, I thought he was going to uncork some sort of tactic here. He didn't, he didn't do that. He didn't do that. Uh, let's take. Okay, knight comes out. This is looking a little frightening, actually. He's got a he's got a flexing emoji. I'm <laughs> I'm not that happy here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play this pawn up. Still not entirely satisfied with my position. Um, let's bring this knight here. Askana, thanks for the bits as well. E5. Okay, let's get hurt here. Is knight h6 a bad counter knight h5? Sometimes it's necessary loose cannon, but um, it's something you always want to avoid. Put it that way. Um, let's take this. I hope this is playable. I'm kind of getting hurt here by this uh, this opening. You know, c3 I've always said is one of the one of the toughest moves to to face for fundamental principles. You really do have to think of that idea of c3 a lot differently than you think of you know, all your normal moves. Still locked down in Germany, drinks on you. Well, speaking of drinks on you, I got one of them. It's called a coffee, and I really need it right now. So um, here, I think he can take, although I'm not sure it matters. This, this move, I think, is a little bit worse than this move. Um, I'm going to go here. He does have some, uh, some moves he can do here. Yeah, Big Dill's always got the energy. Is that the chess bra mug? It is. It is. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty little thing. Pretty little thing. Pure quality. So... I had so many drinks last night, I did something very funny. I made a bet that someone in the group chat on Discord was not going to make a rating goal. So I bet against them. And then I also agreed to coach them. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how that happened. Free piece, yes, free piece. Just coach them poorly. Yeah, yeah. So that's the ideal. That's the ideal thing. I coach them enough to like be just under the rating goal. I get paid for coaching. And then <laughs> I and then I also win my bet. <laughs> We're doing okay. We are doing okay. I'm gonna try to bring the rooks to the center, two open files. Okay, attacking the knight, let's move the king out of the way. 
Why would we bring the rooks to the middle? A great question asked by many. This is just the first game where we're we're drinking from the chess bra mug here. That's gonna give us power. Remember that we want to trade pieces. When when I look at a position, I'm up a piece. That's already telling me like moves like bishop d4 are probably good. Right? Moves like h6, uh, trying to tempt him to trade, always good. Always want to go for trades. Kev, yeah, you're late to class? That's true. That's true, actually. Let's play this h6 move. It's part of the habits, and it's, it's always a good thing. This pawn is loose, but, you know, it's not always the one you want to take. There we go. There, there's, a, there's a fork we can do. There's a fork we can do. Now he can get out of it with this move, and he should. Yeah, I'm just going to take that back. In between moves are hard. Hey, Mr. Monopoly. Okay, this is hanging. Doing a trade is always, always going to be something I vouch for. Especially when you're out material, like I said. I'm gonna go rook here next. It's gonna be a trade of rooks. So I can I can pretty much do this no matter what he was gonna do there. Um there we go. I'm gonna take with a knight. Again, it's not about taking that pawn there. I'd rather trade the rooks. I think it's very important. He's attacking two pawns at once here. There's not much I can do about it, to be honest with you. Um I'm gonna try to take a pawn in response. What's up, Airbus driver? We're on V3. We've been on uh, V3 for about a week and a half, I would say. Something like that. Okay, let's take that. Um, now he wants to take this pawn. I should save it. Let's go here. Trap the knight. Too advanced. Remember, we want to bring the king to the middle. Uh, he should check me and pick up these pawns, but he's not going to do that. Unfortunate for him. That was his chance to maybe make this game very close. But yeah, king to the middle and attack pawns. So attack that guy. And then we'll just sort of walk the king in. Can't be too perfect in end games. Um, I always tell you guys, as long as you're bringing the king to the middle and attacking pawns, I just promise you you're going to win the end game. <laughs> that's, all, that's all it is. King's in the middle. Uh, his knight's been kicked out. Take a pawn. And if you have a pass pawn, push it. If you have a pass pawn, push it. Period. Period. Okay, free knight. We probably want to uh, defend. Let's put it in the middle. Just going one, two, three, four. Gavin, thanks for the 250 bits. I'm glad the London course has been helpful, man. Uh, this is actually a trade, which is great news for me. Great news for me. Remember, trades are ideal. Trades are ideal. I cut my own hair? No, we have a an in-house stylist. Big deal. Okay, now it's now it's just what I what I've been saying, guys. Pawn all the way. Okay. Okay, at the risk of um, ruining something, I want to show you guys how to win this. Um, because I think, it, I think it's instructive. So ignore this knight and pawn. If these guys were off the board, it would still be winning. So the first thing you do when you have a queen against the pawn is you want to bring the king, or you want to bring the queen closer to the pawn. And if he ever goes in front of the pawn, that's your cue to bring the king closer to the pawn as well, okay? So if the king is anywhere except in front of the pawn, you don't touch your king. Just bring your king closer. So we can take this king closer. Now, as soon as he steps away from the front of the pawn, right, he's going to queen it. We got we to gotta keep giving him another check. And whenever you can go closer to the pawn, go closer. So I'm going to check him here. 
Okay, we're going to see where he goes. If he goes here, I'm not going to bring my king closer because the king's not in front of the pawn. King's in front of the pawn. Bring the king closer. Okay, now the king has to move. Again, we're pretending these guys don't exist. King goes here. I have a lot of ways to win. This would be winning because it pins the pawn and I'm going to take it next turn. Um, there's fancy ways to win, like queen here is fancy. He gets a queen and you checkmate him. And then there's moves like queen here and down here. Again, pretending that pawn isn't there. So obviously I'm going to try to pick the fanciest one. But the, the bottom line is that that position is winning. And if you have the queen, you see a lot of people flailing around with checks. They don't know the technique. You want the king to go in front of the pawn. You want the king to go in front of the pawn. That's the, that's the goal. When the king goes in front, you bring your king closer. Go e5. What? Am I playing the same guy? Why is everyone playing this opening? Did someone just release a video on this or something? <laughs> How am I playing this against this opening twice in a row? What are the chances? I've never seen this before. I feel like someone just released a video, you know? What's up, Andy? I can't fix that habit for you because it sounds like a good one. Ooh, the early bishop. Okay, we'll throw the pawn out. It's like I, I, I barely got the knight out before uh, he was already pinning me. You know, I, I barely had time because he went here and I didn't, I didn't really have any time to react to, to him pinning my knight. I would have prevented it with h6, but doing it after d3 would be a little bit early. A little bit early. Is that the hillbilly attack? No, hillbilly attack is against the Karakhan. It's the same moves as the hillbilly attack, but black has to change his moves. Um, Bishop h4, so again, if we play uh, d6, we might have to play a specific move next. He's going to go there. Let's castle. We didn't, we didn't uh, want to play g5 ever, which means that after knight c3, we only have one move as part of the habits to uh, prevent knight d5 or to deal with knight to d5. Um, knight to h2 is certainly interesting. Hmm. Knight h2. I, I guess he's going here? Man, I feel... <laughs> I haven't seen any of these ideas before. I haven't seen any of these ideas. First of all, we see an early bishop g5. Second of all, knight h2 to g4. And then also just this opening, e4, bishop, uh, c4. Super uncommon, I would say. Um, so I'm just going to continue with the move I would normally play. He took it, which is a little bit generous of him. I can't take that. He's, uh, <laughs> he's playing, playing some strong moves. He's playing some very strong moves. Techno saved my dog with the prime set. Thank you. Bishop takes would have been a bit better. He would have actually won a pawn there. Um, I'm going to take back. I feel like this guy might have watched Havis or something. This is uh, <laughs> quite frightening, guys. This is quite frightening. Dude, the 1300s are coming out with the big time theory. You would have taken that knight without blinking? Come on, dude. You gotta blink more often. Come on, dude. We can't be blundering queens. We're level 3 now. Thank you, uh, Grimscock99. Glad you're enjoying it. Um, okay, let's bring the rook to the middle. He's playing well, but uh, he hasn't won any material yet.
What's in the mug? We just got some classic coffee. Classic coffee. Okay, pawn up. Take it. Okay, so we've got our pieces developed, basically. We want to go for some pawn pushes. Pawn pushes in the center. Probably push these two pawns, if I can. Um, knight into the middle also looks good. Knight into the middle looks great. Now... He's only got one move, and then I'll probably push the center pawn. Have I eaten today? Of course not. Of course not. If you want a chest bra mug, by the way, we are shipping them. They're just not on our store right now because uh, it hasn't been easy to ship the mugs along with the merch. Like when people place an order that is mugs and merch. Um, so what we're doing is we're, we're selling the mugs just individually. So if you want a mug, they're fully available and we got lots of stock. There's two colors. There's this one and a, and a dark gray, which also looks very good. Um, you just have to send either myself or Alan or Eric a message on Discord and we can process it for you very easily. So if you're interested in a mug, they're 100% available. We just don't have them on the store right now. So it's sort of like a if you know, you know type of thing. I do, I do try to mention that during our streams, but it's a good reminder. Yeah, got to join our Discord. We're very active there. And anyone who's management in our Discord, if you message them about a mug, they'll be able to help you out. Want a mug? More like need a mug. Okay, so we pushed in the center. He's kicked our knight out. He's got the queen there. I mean, he's, he's playing well. I'm going to go for a few random pawn moves over here. Why does every streamer also have a Discord? I think the answer is pretty easy for, for us. Like, just builds community. Like, we have so many channels in our, our Discord. We got people talking about NHL, NBA, MMA, sharing pictures of food, drinks, sharing music, stories, just dropping by. Like, for me personally, it's the thing I open every, every morning. Every morning on my phone, I check Discord. I check all the channels that I regularly post and chat in. Um, we have a bouldering channel. We have a Tinder advice channel. There's a bunch of channels that we use for things we do on stream, like events and sub battles, and stuff like that. So um, I like to think we have a pretty, pretty, pretty cool Discord with a lot of cool, uh, cool channels, a lot of members. So I think it's just a fun place to hang out and chat. Definitely, a lot of people have, uh, you know, made some friends on Discord they wouldn't otherwise have, like. Maybe you like a certain genre of music, you go to the music channel and you find some other dude who also listens to the same stuff that you do. And you guys start throwing music suggestions at, at each other. You know, simple things like that. Thanks for the four months, Greyhound. Okay. Um, great move by my opponent, by the way. Great move. Um, Based on the game so far, don't think I've done anything like too out of habits. Um, but I think I think my opponent is just honestly playing a great game. This looks like a very deserved win for the guy. Okay, I suppose we better take that. I just had to get out of the um, diagonal. Like basically, if anything's pointing at your king. You know, and there's only one one piece in the way of it. You got to get your king out of the way. Like that's that's a must. That's a must. Um, don't have much we can do here. I think we're gonna probably have to take that. You don't see the Tinder channel? It's a sub only channel. It's a sub only channel. See, I played a good game. I think we're just dead. I mean. There's nothing suspicious at all. I mean, even in the final position, I can take and go queen g5 and I'd be winning. But I just mean, I think he played a, a really good game at 1300. Like, seemed like a tricky opponent. I think we deserve the white pieces now. There we go. Yeah, I was going to say, we haven't played any games with the, uh, the white pieces yet today. Ireland, Gavin. Okay. 
Welcome, welcome, guys. C3 move, right? This is what we're playing against the Sicilian. And it's actually refreshing to see our opponent knows what he's doing. Knows what he's doing. So he's playing this move because it doesn't let me take the center with d4. It's great. It's great. Active versus reactive chess. Active chess, you're doing, you're doing something that you came up with. Reactive chess, you're doing something that is in response to what your opponent came up with. It's probably the five second explanation. Um, let's put a pawn in the center. Take rather than push, I always recommend taking. No matter what it is in the center, I always recommend taking or keeping the tension rather than pushing. I do not advise closed positions at this rating level. Definitely not. You need open positions, you need tactical positions, you need to get games that are going to give you opportunities to find tactics. Open the position up. It's, it's the best way to learn. Yeah, the thing is, Fork or Barely Knower, almost every content creator that I know um, on YouTube or Twitch in chess recommends C3 against the Sicilian. It truly is the hack to, to low elo Sicilians um, because 90% of the games, you just get to play D4. You know what I mean? Um, so we can't put our, our knight here. we got to somehow develop the rest of these pieces. I'm going to focus on just castling quickly. Be my friend, I am tall. Eight months. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the Bezos bucks. Let's get castled quick. Okay, uh, rook to the middle. Always going to want to rook on that open file. We're going to get this bishop out to one of these squares, um, you know, aggressive, aggressively placed. Our knight does not have that square, so we're going to choose the next best central square, and it's going to be this one. It's the best we can do. Do I not recommend Karakan for habits? Yeah, I, I haven't been recommending it. It's a fine opening, um, but... I, I, I think e5 is, is fine for now. Uh, Bash Funk, there is a YouTube video for habits that starts at 500, 400 actually. And there's all the past broadcasts uh, saved on our, on our Twitch channel. So yes, we started this account at 400 and now we're 1300. So there, there is a lot to catch up on in case you're just, just joining the show. Let's say, okay, he's hitting our bishop. Let's. That's one of the reasons why I played h3 was to save this bishop. So that's actually perfect timing that he did that. Okay, that makes no sense to me, but this is why you make moves like this to to have a square for your bishop that his knight can't capture you. Feels good, man. He he attacked me. He just went back. He wasted time. Now it's my turn. Now it's my turn. I got to develop my queen, right? But I don't have a lot of space here. He's got this guy up here. He's got this guy very strong, right? If I go here, he's gonna put his his uh, uh, bishop there. He's gonna attack my queen. It's gonna be very annoying. Um, so let's try to let's try to kill some of these pawns over here. Give myself a little bit more space. Um, how do you kill pawns like this? Well, whenever there's a pawn on g4, g5, b4, b5, one of the number number one moves you should think of every time you see a pawn there, at least consider it, is that one of these moves. So in this in this position, imagine I played the move g4. Just imagine that I right now played g4. What should black do? Probably this move, h5. So black plays the move b5. What should I do? Probably a4. It's crazy, but something as simple as just recognizing that pattern, you'll probably play the move the move like 90% of the time is going to be good as well. Just just the these moves in chess are are often very well met by striking with you know h4 to counter g5, or h5 to counter g4, a4 to counter b5. It's it's very often the case. Very often the case. So a, a4 is an extremely good move here. You'll notice that it really throws him off. Why? After a6, I can take, and he can't take back with a pawn because of the pin. So he plays bishop a6. Why is this good? I'm going to take it. He's going to take back. Why am I so happy with this? Well, it went from him having three pawns that could connect with one another to him having two isolated Pawns that don't connect to each other at all. They can't defend each other. Me, I've got these beautiful three pawns. One, two, three. They all protect one another. And, you know, if this pawn in the middle doesn't have this guy here, it's very easy for him to attack it. So my weakest pawn in this position is actually that one. It's very hard for him to attack it. These guys are in the way uh, on this diagonal, and none of his pieces are currently attacking it. 
he'd have to put a rook there to even attack it one time. And guess what? He can't even do that. So I'm making my weakness one of the hardest things to attack in the position. It's all the way down here. So now that we've loosened up his pawns, I can play my queen move. And he doesn't have his bishop, uh, bishop f5. This is great. Yay. Um, let's put a knight in the center of the board. Can't be bad. Can't be bad. Uh, oops. Let's uh, take with the bishop. Remember, bringing the rook to the middle is definitely something we want to do. But if I ask you guys where we want to put our rooks in this position, would anyone agree that they're actually on their best squares already? This guy's on a, an open file, and so is this guy. Well, semi-open file. Open for us, right? So it's actually pretty much developed just by sitting there, which is which is great. So we're going to take that, and you know what? We have a little tactic here. We're going to put our bishop out. We're going to be uh, skewering the queen to the rook. Yeah, that's great. Take that. And we probably just want to, we've got h3, we want to trade pieces, if possible. So maybe knight here, knight here would be an idea, try to trade with him. Obviously, he can decline that trade, but um, if I could, I would, I would like to do something like that. Okay, Let, let's try it. That's, that's a very quick plan I just came up with, but if I can trade queens, I will. If I can trade knights, I will. Knight for bishop, I will. Rooks, I will. Like, any trade. I'm down down for anything right now. Go 95. So I want him to take me. Why? I'm going to take with the queen. Then the queen's going to have to take. You see this? Look at that. I just traded everything off the board. It's This is ideal. Okay, that's how you're... Okay, now we're in an endgame. So now that we're in an endgame, probably going to bring my king towards the middle. Why are we down for trades? Even material? Uh, this is like one of those spot the difference things. Why don't you reread your sentence and find out why it's wrong? Let's put the rook over here. Um, I think this one might be better, but I, I can I can respect the idea of uh, wanting to attack things. Five. Good move. Very good move by my opponent. Right. I can't take it without losing my rook. So it's a super strong move by him. Probably rook to the middle makes some sense. Not an easy one to convert at all. What truly really defines an endgame? I came up with like a uh, kind of a fun, let's put the king there, fun rule. Give a check. I'm assuming he takes one of my pawns. Check. Um, how are we going to, we got to get some pre-moves. Let's go. So doubling the rooks. That's like always a decent pre-move. Let's pre-move this. But you see what I mean? That like, let's try to pre-move that. Oh, let's pre-move that. Let's pre-move that. Let's pre-move this. He's going to attack my rook. Oh, let's take. Let's go here. And I'm just going to put all my pawns on dark squares if I can. Oh, that was a good move by him. Okay, let's pre-move the pawn. Okay. I'm going to pre-move this in case he checks me. Just the... Oh, he does check me. Get me pre-move back. But you see how if I if I only go on dark squares, I should be able to... Oh, he hung his bishop there. I should be able to try and take all these pawns. At least try. Yeah, hopefully you get the idea. I mean... Pre-moving should be uh, a tool. He played a great game, by the way. Uh, Pre-moving should be a tool that we all use um, to good effect. Like, especially after this happened. I I think that if you're on the dark squares, your number one priority... Uh, sorry, I think if uh, he has a light squared bishop, your number one priority should be dark square everything. Like, put the rook here, put the king there. None of these pawns can do anything. Well, it's basically a pawn. Uh, and put all these guys on dark squares as well. If everything's on a dark square, this guy's never going to be able to take, take anything. Never going to be able to take anything. So, so it's important. Like when you when you have an end game against just a bishop, he can only operate on that color. That's the only color he's going to be able to touch for the rest of the game. So put everything on the opposite color, and it's going to be safe. You don't you don't have to worry about it. Because pre moving, the reason why we're we're scared to pre move is we don't know what our opponent's going to do. But if everything's on the opposite color. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what he does. 
It doesn't matter what he does. Um, Jay's real. Let's let's analyze the game for a sec. So first of all, credit to him. He actually knows about C three and he has a move ready. Um, C four by him is terrible, which is why even even though I was happy to see that he played D five, um, he followed up with a atrocious move. It could have been a mess slip. I'm not sure. It didn't look like one though. Why is it such a blunder? Because technically, as soon as I bring the knight here, the pawn's dead. Like, it, there's no way he can save it. And we saw that in the game. As soon as he played this, why is this a blunder or a mistake? Because a4 is so strong. It is so strong. Okay. Why, uh, why are all these moves mistakes? It's because both of us are missing a4. Okay, you see how high this evaluation bar is? Am I up any material? <laughs> Am I up any material? No, I'm not up a single pawn. What's the evaluation? It's almost plus five. And I'm not up anything. That's insane. <laughs> That's insane. That's all because of a4, right? If I don't play a4, and let's say in this position, you know, black plays like a6 or bishop b7 or some other move, it's only like plus two. The, the a4 move adds like plus two, plus three to the position, just a4. It looks like nothing. The single pawn move, whole game falls apart. Queen c2, what should I be playing? b3. I didn't feel like it was very habitsy, but the idea is c4 afterwards. Um, just to give you an idea of what kind of tactics are possible after that. But still, you know, the game falls apart for him. I have bishop f3. It's very good for white. Um, and I just go for trades. There we go. So he played a good game. Opening was fine, though. That's just a reminder. When people do play well against c3, it's not like we the opening fails. It's still a very good opening. Play d4. Um, if he takes, we take back. We bring our knight out and attack the queen. We'll get a lot of tempo. A lot of tempi, rather. So let's say they go there. Or sorry, let's say they go like this. This has happened before. You go knight c3 and then d5. And you're very close to winning. I remember playing a few habits games like this. And we look at the valuation. It's already like plus two. I'm not up any any material. So you can you can win very quickly in this opening. I know it doesn't look like much, but in this position right here, what would be a normal move for black to play? I know it sounds crazy, but there's a pawn on g4. I would think about h5. You know what I mean? <laughs> so this is just me proving that even in a position where it's not like totally winning, h5 against g4, h4 against g5, a4 against b5, a5 against b4, it's always going to be a good idea. All right, let's go for e4. Okay, so we all know what's going to happen. As I said, I never go for openings that push or keep things closed. Whenever possible, I'll always open things up. Always open things up. Do I care about hanging on to this pawn? No, I never do. So we want to get a pawn in the middle of the board. Oh, it looks like he's offering me uh, another pawn, so I won't shy away. But yeah, we're not. We never try to hang on to pawns if our opponent, you know, does a gambit or something. We're not too worried about that. Just going to try to get the pieces out. Okay, pieces out, castle, I guess I was probably going to do castling anyway, rook to the middle, makes a lot of sense, this is all quick, quick development here, okay, he goes back, uh, I want to develop this bishop, I'm not able to go to these two squares right now, which kind of sucks, so I'm probably going to end up just going here. Okay, um, let's get our h3. We'll probably get our queen up, rook over, and that's that's pretty good development right there. Can't complain, you know? Can't complain. It truly is picture perfect. This is this is the ideal development. It truly is. Throw back to habits one. Yeah, we're gonna ignore most of what's going on over there. I don't like obviously I'm not gonna take it for no reason. Okay, so basically what my opponent just did there was he had a knight on this square 
and you put it on that square, and then you put that knight on that square. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like, it's like, yeah, just sit over there. I I'll handle this. I'll handle this. I don't know how to describe it. It's like, you get a substitution in football or something, and like, the guy runs off the field and just runs back on. Um, let's put a knight in the middle of the board. It's always going to be good. Knight in the middle. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. We're also up a pawn. Let's not forget that. He played a gambit. So we're up a pawn. Trades are good. So another move I might look at is knight here. Offering a trade. Hello, Neil. All right. So let's do what I just said. Um, let's like offer a trade, basically. Technically, I don't want to do this because his other knight's just going to come back in. But in principle, I love the idea of trading pieces. So I am going to go for this. I think it makes a lot of sense. And our opponent has sacrificed bishop. Well, with most sacrifices, if not all of them, we pretty much take right away. Um, we're going to go for trades because trading pieces is good, when, especially when your opponent sacks a piece. Now I have an extra piece. If I can trade, believe me, I, I'm doing it immediately. Immediately. So, what's everyone's natural reaction to a sacrifice? Or what should it be, in case you don't have this natural reaction? What's the number one thing to do when someone sacrifices near you or king? Number one thing to do. Panic. That's correct. Other than that. Take the material like a Chad. Well, we always take the material. Always take the material. I see some people suggesting moves. Um, I don't think I've really seen anybody say exactly what, I, what I'm looking for. But I've seen a lot of people pretty much say it. Um, so the number one thing that you, you want to do in general is... Uh, bring pieces to your king immediately. Bring pieces towards your king. So bishop f1, I saw people, a lot of people suggesting it. It's a great move. But I want to put it here on g2, almost as if I'm replacing the pawns that used to be there. So I want to bring a lot of pieces in front of my kings to help protect it. So a lot of people said protect the king. A lot of people said bring the bishop. But specifically, bring pieces towards your king in order to protect it. So bring, bring pieces towards your king is very important. Um, so immediately, I'm going to put this bishop here, okay? And then my next move is probably going to be putting this bishop here and this bishop here. So I'm like using my pieces to create this little wall in front of my king to replace the pawns that it no longer has. Omid. Hello. Um, okay, first of all, that's a trade. I am not going to say no to a trade, okay? If, <laughs> if you can do trades... After your opponent uh, sacrifices a piece, generally speaking, I would say do it, okay? Um, so maybe another way to do a trade here or to offer a trade would be this. Okay, so obviously I'm hopeful he's going to do that. And this move. It's a great, great teachable moment. Do I care about this check? My king sits there very nicely. I don't care at all. In fact, I'm going <laughs> to completely ignore him. Completely ignore him. You guys would be scared, I understand. This is where you realize there's nothing to be afraid of. There's no monsters under the bed. He checks me, I go here, and then what? And then what? He's got absolutely nothing. That's the end of it. That's the end of his checks. He's got one check, that's it. One check. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. This is this is me stepping in as a grandmaster and not being scared of this where you guys might be scared. But I'm doing that because I have to I have to inform you guys. <laughs> I have to show some level of instruction. But that's not something to be afraid of. So I'm I'm gonna keep pushing here. Um I actually would play this move and I think I'm gonna play it next. I just sort of made a, a quick move there to try to get a pass bond and push it, which is another plan. But um the other thing I would do is I would go here. Why? It offers another trade, and it's pieces in front of my king. 
So I have only have one move, so I'm gonna go here. You're not brave enough to play chess? It's okay, man. Chess is a contact sport, you know what I mean? It's not for everybody. Queen h3. So it so happens here that it's even better that I play queen h3 now because if you look what's going to happen, he doesn't have any squares available. So he has to trade with me. So this is ideal. This is peak performance right here. Okay, but like I said, queen h3 was a move I was going to do anyway. It was a move I was going to do anyway. It's a move I actually meant to do on the last turn. Okay. You're not ever going to convince me not to take this queen. <laughs> Immediately take that. Get it off the board. How about a pass pawn? Sometimes this is the hardest part of the game. You trade the queens off. You got extra material. How do you win? Okay, let's start with a pass pawn. If I can push this pawn, that's big success. I've always said, easiest plan in chess is get a pass pawn and push the damn thing. Right? Can I push it right now? No. The bishop's covering it. So how about this move? I'm going to support that square so I can push the pawn. Easy. Easy plan. Is Bishop C5 the best move in the position? I'm not sure. But I would make it 10 times out of 10. Just push this thing. And if I can go there, I'll push it again. And then I'm going to try to control that square. And that's it. Let's take. But I'm, I'm not really trying to utilize very difficult plans, in my opinion. All I'm trying to do is, is push. Okay, so I'm just going to move the Bishop back. And I'm going to stay on that square. I want to push. So I'm going to bring my Rook back here and push. If he trades... Guys, I'm taking trades 10 times out of 10. 10 times out of 10. And what do we do when we're in the end game? Attack our opponent's pawns. Push the pass pawn, if we have one. And king to the middle. Well, let's start with king to the middle. We're protecting this, so let's bring the king. Okay, we got the king. Now let's attack our opponent's pawns. We got to get our rook involved somehow. Open files, rooks like those. Let's get our rook down here somewhere. Attack pawns. Attack pawns. Okay. Another pass pawn. Another pass pawn. Rook c1, rook c6. Definitely would be good. I'm, I'm not debating. But I'm trying to I'm trying to utilize like the simplest of plans. <laughs> Literally, like I don't know what he's doing here. I probably should be paying attention to it. But I'm like just absolutely sending my own plan, and that's it. My own plan. Okay, and it worked out. And it worked out. Now, this isn't the best. Obviously, my opponent got a lot of action going on over here. Like, he's he's very close to getting his own, uh, his own queen. But I'm just pointing out that it's often enough to just push your pawn. It's a very simple way to win. Okay, e4. Let's see what opening we're going to get. These are the most common. However, did someone just release a Scandi video? Why am I seeing all Scandinavian today? Um, so when the queen comes out, I always say just just at just attack it like that's just basic attack it put a pawn in the center knights out We're gonna go for a very similar um, Setup, okay, a very similar setup to what we always do when the bishop comes out. We always play this move, okay? Bishop there. Let's put the bishop. Let's put the bishop here. Actually, this is where we normally put it where when we can it goes there. Let's castle Okay, we're gonna put the rook in the middle of the board Eric Rosen talked about it today. See, he talked about... Guys, Eric Rosen talked about the Scandinavian. It's like Elon tweeting about Dogecoin or something. Eric Rosen is moving the markets. Um, let's get our bishop out. Whoa! Okay, well, I'm going to be unfazed for the moment. And just go here. This is our normal reaction to getting attacked. Whoa! Oh my goodness, what is this guy doing? Let's move our queen. Where do we move our queen here? Where do we move our queen? Someone help me out. Uh, Paul, thanks for the prime sub. Love those fresh primes, man. Thanks for spending it on the channel here. I see a few people suggesting D2. Um, so if we could just go ahead and ban those guys, that'd be great. Um, D2 allows bishop takes f3. 
rethink. We never ever want to have double pawns. So uh, let's not do that. Queen d3. Why is queen d3 so good? Okay. Why is queen d3 so good? We're guarding our knight and we're getting out of the pin. D d3 is OP. d3 is a big move. Big time move. Okay. Goes g4. I mean, kind of have to take that. Okay. So why do we not want d2? We want to actually get out of the pin. So getting out of the pin is top priority. Not allowing double pawns is top priority. And this move does both. This move does both. So that's why it's so good. Okay, takes back. Um, am I in a rush to bring my rook to the center? No. Why? It puts my, me in a pin again. Not in a big rush to do that. So what are some of the moves that we usually talk about around this point? I think knight's in the middle. Is sort of uh, one of our main plans. One of our main plans. This looks good. This looks good as well. Thank you, Thunder Mullet. That is the highest praise I've received in the last four minutes. Thank you. You're my favorite streamer, and you watch Salty Clown. Jeez. Um, let's take it. Uh, probably with the bishop makes makes more sense. Um. Just, we usually take back with the bishop. Okay, when we get attacked, we also always go back to the same square when available. So we're going to go back to g3. Going to go mad things for the 22 months. h5. So he, he actually just blunders here. We're going to take advantage of that blunder. That is a free pawn, and it's a center pawn. And it's a center pawn. Let's take it. Oh, who just checked Discord? I'll spare you guys and uh, mute the notifications. Any Discord checkers? Um, okay, we're getting attacked. Um, once again, I usually go to this square when that happens. Isn't H3 terrifying? Well, the thing about habits is while moves like this might be terrifying, the bottom line is when you're, when you're playing the habits, it's like you might lose to crazy stuff like this. As long as you're utilizing the habits and playing them effectively, you can take solace in the fact that you're doing good things and that you're probably improving. It's, it's not always about, uh, you know, is this terrifying? It's like, if you're following the habits and something scary is happening, dude, who cares? Who cares? I've lost lots of games where I just get mated by an H-Pond push, but it's not going to be every single game. So yes. It's terrifying, but my number one piece of advice, if you're scared about people attacking you, number one piece of advice, we are going to take it, um, is it's very hard to imagine a case, and it's, it never happens in chess. It's impossible for your opponent to checkmate you by force. I don't know if that helps any of you, but it is impossible for your opponent to checkmate you by force. Period. Sometimes there's force mates, but you're probably already in a terrible position at that point. After h3, a lot of a lot of people are gonna be like, oh my god, he's gonna mate me as an open file. It's like, guys, there's such a thing as defense in chess. There's such a thing as defense. Okay, let's bring the rook to the middle. Just because your opponent attacks you does not mean there is no defensive move available. There are lots of defensive moves available. They are always there. Right. If you're too scared of being attacked, then you'll probably never play. You know, you'll probably never play good moves if you're too scared of being attacked, because there are often times where, hey, well, let this crazy idiot try to attack me. I'm going to focus on playing in the center or whatever it is. Right. Um, OK, let's I don't know, rook to the middle of the board and I'll probably push this pawn next. So. Sometimes it's helpful to just repeat that to yourself and just remind yourself that, hey, um, okay, well, he's got a free pawn here, actually. He's threatening my pawn, which is not super nice. I think I want to defend that. I might even bring my knight back. Center pawn is just kind of valuable. I think I should keep it. Um, this is obviously a good move, but you know, I mean, I'm going to defend the center pawn for the moment. But yeah, if, if uh, even when I'm playing my games, let's say, like, at the GM level, and the GM starts attacking me, it's obviously a lot scarier than if you guys attacked me let's be clear but i'll repeat that i literally repeat that in my head i'll be like okay there's no way this works there's no way this guy just mated me out of nowhere just relax calm down and find the defense 
you know, just calm down, Amon. This is this guy's not, you know, the greatest generational player that we've ever seen. Um, just go for a trade. Of course, you're not scary, Lord Day. You could be, but that that'll that'll come with improvement. None of you guys scare me right now. It's like Dan. It's like Dan. Are you guys going to be scared if Dan attacks you? No, because Dan's not a very tactical player. Not a very tactical player. He needs to, needs to improve his tactics. He needs to get scarier. Are you going to be scared if Salty Clown attacks you? Yes, it's probably mate. Strong move by our opponent. Okay, let's get some pre-moves in. Let's practice our pre-moves. I'm just going to throw this move there. Okay, he's probably going to check me. I'm going to pre-move that. He just doubled his rooks. I'm expecting him to check me. He might not, of course. Might not. But I'm just saying, I'm going to pre-move this. Okay, what else is a good pre-move? The knight's hanging. I don't want to pre-move that, but I might, I might hover it. I might hover it. Oh, he checked me. Let's block the check. Okay, I'm going to hover it again. And I'll take it. There we go. Okay, he's probably going to check me here. Let's pre-move that. All right, he said that. He's probably going to check me there. Let's pre-move that. He's probably going to take it. Let's pre-move that. He, he doesn't have to do all these things, but anticipation, anticipation. That's what all pre-moves are. Okay, let's pre-move a check. Why are checks good to pre-move? Because I can then think after the check about what I'm going to do next. Let's check. So I'm going to go here. Okay, let's check him again. Oh, let's go here to check him again. Let's check him again. All right, so I'm not saying that I'm going to win this game, but I'm doing the best I can, and checks are the best things to pre-move. Oh, which is why he did that. It's a great move. Great move. Aren't these pre-moves too much for habits? Well, I'm sort of showcasing how pre-moves work. I'm not... I'm not out here saying we only have 0.2 seconds, so this is another good pre-move because it's check, but don't think we'll get the dub here. He just has to make a move. <laughs> and queen h6 is a good one anyway. Um, I'm showcasing sort of what good pre-moves look like. It's a little bit of anticipation, but it's, it's also about utilizing checks very well. Checks are the best thing because when you pre-move a check, then you can... Then you can think about what you want to do next while he's reacting to your check. So all like when I when I pre-move like this check and this check, I can think about maybe what I want to do next after those checks. I can use the time. Because he had a minute uh, 33, and at the end of all this, he had a minute. So that's like 30 seconds that I can use to think. This game was mostly about the pre-moves, which is why I was sort of explaining that at the end. Wait, we've already played this guy. This is the first rematch, I think. Do you guys remember MMC? He absolutely put us in the dirt. This smiling guy is going to be the bane of my existence in habits. Oh my goodness. Remember last time we took here, and he's the reason why I said we're going to look at this opening. If you guys remember, I said we're, we're, he's the reason we're going to study this opening. And we decided to play this. That's our plan. Echo, echo, links to the gifted sub. Thank you, Gabs. I'd like to think it was. MMC beat us last time. Yep. You're 100% correct. The smiling guy. Okay, we're going to castle. That's exactly why you um, look at your games after you've lost them, or if you have a bad opening, study it immediately. Like, this game is going to be a perfect example. So we said we were going to go for this setup, and we were going to play this and bishop there. That was, that was basically the extent of our practice. And after that, we're sort of on our own. Okay, b4. Uh, I'm just going to get h6 in there. Okay, rook to e8. It's pretty much going to be a good move in almost every opening. Rook there. Now we sort of have to think. Now we sort of have to formulate a plan uh, about how we're going to develop because we don't have a lot of space. Hello, BJH. Drink a lot of caffeine. I don't know if that's a habit, BJH, but I'm, I'm doing it. You know, I'm doing it. Okay, so we don't really want to block our bishop with that move. Um, taking is reasonable because it opens up that bishop, but I like the idea of keeping a pawn in the middle of the board. One thing that we just talked about, Koi, you're on point today. One thing that we just talked about was a5. 
We just talked about how, hey, if they put the pawn there, it's always a decent move to play a5. So let's just play it. We just happen to have just looked at that, so I'm going to play it. I'm just going to go for it. He was GGPCTU, carrying the stream. Not easy to do. Thought he did well. Good to see you, buddy. Here for some habits, I hope. Got Dr. Usadik here as well. E5, good move by my opponent. I am going to um, activate my bishop a little further. This was sort of a move we played earlier, but now I need some space for my queen. This is a better diagonal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. He decides to take. The reason we've been waiting so long is we want to take with a pawn to continue to control the center. Okay, let's continue with the move that I mentioned we're going to do. Okay, at some point, you guys know, a knight jump in the middle is fairly consistent with how we've been playing so far. Okay, got our rooks in the middle. We're going to stick knight here. I think we can be reasonably happy with how the game has gone. Um, if he takes, probably take with the pawn. See what he wants to do. This knight to that square next, supporting this, makes a lot of sense. Just activating. This is a safe, slow build up. I think it's a good way to put it. Remember, we don't really want to take. We want to leave our knight. Our knight's strong there. We're not interested in, in helping him out by taking. This guy's annoying. Ah, and he takes. Guys, hopefully we don't miss this tactic. Pawn takes, and we are forking his two pieces. That is a piece for us. Slow build up. We're... Of course, going to trade, not only because we can ruin his pawns, but because we're up material. We just want a piece. Of course, I want every trade on the board. Every single trade. Give it to me. Let's go knight here. Knight in the center. That was uh, um, a move I don't think would be too hard to spot, I hope. E4. Knight has to go somewhere. Knight F4. So what should we be looking here, tactically speaking? We should be looking for e2, forking the king and queen, if that becomes available. And most importantly, this is a pattern that you guys should have up here from, from earlier habit streams. When those double pawns are there, what do I always say? I said we always want to check and deliver mate down there. Well, that's exactly what we can do. It's game over. Okay, and this is a, a pattern, a checkmating pattern that we are very familiar with from habits is that that's why we're so scared of getting these double pawns ourselves, because queen down there in checkmate is so hard to deal with. So we lost to him earlier. We improved our opening a, a lot, I would say tremendously. And now we're able to get a win because of it. So we can analyze this, but I, I also want to find the previous game we played against him. Oh, yeah, super near the top. There it is. Actually, it should have been easier to spot because it's a loss. <laughs> that should have been taken a lot the last time. Okay, let's take a look at this game. The reason I brought this game up is because this is the last time we played against him. Um, I thought that he was the... I'm losing you, buddy. <laughs> Stay with me. I thought that he was the reason we played that game, but actually I remember MMC because he just played a solid game. Let's look at it anyway. I, I thought that he was the guy that we looked at the opening and improved it for. Um, there was an opening. That caused us to look at it it just wasn't this guy so it's a little less of a, an improvement story but still mmc very solid player you can see our habits at work here but he just didn't make any blenders you know like it was a, it was a long end game against this guy if you guys remember this game he played very well we brought our king but he played this move and that kind of put us out and look at this a6 and bishop d3 oof this guy played super well. Strong player. And we were able to get the uh, the revenge. 92.2. Look at that. We were able to get the revenge in with a very solid opening here. This is our setup we're going to be going for every time we see this. Big blunder by him, and unfortunately from there, it's not that hard to convert. 
he had a bad game. It happens. Yep. I think he's a solid player, though. The smiley guy has been defeated. The smiley guy has been defeated. Let's see what if we can let's see if we can hit up E4 E5. Dude, there must be a video. There's no, there's literally no way. Five years ago. I don't think it's that one. Mile drag! It's goddamn Mile. It's Big Mile! Big Mile's trolling me. God damn it. It's Mile's, Mile's fault. He has the most recent video. It's Big Mile. It's him. It's the butcher. Guys, yeah, shout out to Mile Drag. If you haven't seen his channel, exclamation mark Mile YouTube in chat. Maybe someone can do that. Go subscribe to Mile. If you enjoy his, uh, look, he's got a return to chess pro video. It's very cute. Every Friday. He's got some very, very good uh, videos for chess openings. Chess openings. Chess openings, guys. So let's say, oh, Smashers Gambit. He's even got, dude, he's, he's uploading a lot, actually. What the hell? Laughing and Gambit for Black. Gambit, dude, you've seen the way Mayo plays. Like, oop, we gotta make a move or I'm gonna, like, lose. Uh... It's gonna, like, abort the game or something. Let's, let's keep the habits going. But he's got a lot of Gambits. If you like that tricky style, perfect for you. Exclamation mark, Mile YouTube. Subscribe to him. I am. Not on my business account, boys. <laughs> not on the business account. You got to keep the business accounts fresh. You know what I mean? Like the Chess Bra TV on Instagram is not fall is only following Eric and myself. I think. You know what I mean? You got to keep you got to keep the business accounts fresh. I sound like I'm from London. Uh, what can I say? That's not the case. <laughs> That's so all I can say. But I, I have lived in Europe for some years and definitely think there's a very Canadian accent and also a very European accent. Thanks for the Prime. Yes, uh, Osevedro. Appreciate that. London, Ontario. <laughs> I did go to school in London, Ontario. This is true. All right, let's go to D6. That should make a move here. Appreciate the, uh, the Prime sub. It's a good song, by the way. Collective Prumstrasse. Uh, Knight here. What are we going to do? We only have one move. You guys should be going here. We do not want to allow this um, without being able to take it. Takes here. Knight's got to move. Knight in the middle, right? Let's take this. Is G5 ever okay here? If you're asking me from a chess perspective, hey, is G5 a good move in these positions? Absolutely. G5 it can sometimes be played. If you're asking me about habits, no, never. <laughs> never play it. He wants to trap our bishop. We're not going to let that happen. Not going to let it happen. Okay, uh, we're going to castle. Queen there. Doesn't this suck, boys? There's no way we can prevent it. But what have I always said to you? I've always said, if you're ever going to have your pawns doubled, Make sure that the queens are off the board. Like, if you can do that, that's at least better than nothing. That's better than nothing. If the queens are on the board, you're probably going to get mated. Okay, we got to develop here. It's a very difficult position, honestly, because, like, I'll go here, I'll bring my rook, but what can I do, you know? G5 would prevent it. You're 100% right. But in this habit series, we are avoiding the move G5. Causes more harm than good. Even though here, it would be a great move. Even though here, it would be a really good move. Is there a reason we don't pre-move recaptures? Um, no. No special reason. You definitely can do it. You definitely can do it. And you see how annoying this pin is? It's basically like... I'm going to lose this game because I don't have a single move. You know, I just don't have any moves available. Um, let's go here and get, get out of the pin. King h1 is classed by him. Yeah, I think he wants to do this. I think he wants to do this. And he does. And he does. So I think we're probably going to get um, 
blasted off the board here. But for the moment, um, taking looks playable. I don't think it's good, but I will play the move. <laughs> oh my goodness, he takes here. Guys, I think we might have just been spared. If he played queen takes there, I would have been quite concerned. Quite concerned. Was king h7 worse? I just don't like being on this diagonal. You know, if he brought his bishop back, I'd have to move my king again. What are you talking about, Fresh Brown? What, uh, okay, let's take it. What video is that? Timmy Vid with Eric on YouTube. Props rapping to it was legit and OP. I'm trying to think what video that you mean. Okay, he took there. I mean, we can take this guy. I know Timmy from South Park, but I'm wondering what video you're talking about where I did that. I do have a... I do like doing the Timmy and uh, and Jimmy impressions from South Park. Definitely like, definitely some hilarious characters. I'm a big fan of South Park, but Jimmy, like Timmy is obviously very funny. You know, maybe not Timmy, but Jimmy is hilarious. Hey, 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 hey guys, maybe maybe we can learn some. Maybe maybe we can learn some 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 habits. Jimmy is hilarious to me. Let's guard this pawn. Probably going to slide my king over 19 seconds in a dream. What can we say? Okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to slide the king over. Hello, Squee. What's up, dude? That's right, Elfish. You can't go wrong, you know? The good old South Park. I'm getting, uh, getting invaded here on the seventh rank. Probably will bring my king over. This opponent's cocky. He's uh, playing some good moves for sure. Attack the bishop. Uh, let's let's make a pre-move. That looks like a safe pre-move. Double, you know, double the rooks. Played Ben to find gold over the board many times. I've also never played a full game against Ben finding gold over the board. Every time I played Ben over the board, we draw in like ten moves and leave. <laughs> Just can't be bothered to play. So then we have like multiple games with the average move. Average moves is like seven or something. <laughs> See where he wants to put this bishop. Um, if I can, I'd like to go here. Not much I can do though. Um, okay, pawn is a start. Pawn is a start. A free piece is a start. Let's pre-move this. You know what? Let's pre-move that. How do I meet the guy? Let's pre-move that. Let's pre-move that. Oh, these pre-moves aren't working out. Pre-move. Check. 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 <laughs> I don't think these pre-moves are working, guys. Check. <laughs> I'm just check. Checking as much as I can. Check. No, nope, I ran out. I'm all, I'm empty. I got no more uh, bullets in the chamber. <laughs> okay. Um, our opponent played a very good opening and got as good of a position as you could. If I were him, though, I would take with the bishop. Thank you. He took with a pawn, not so good. My move also not so great. The engine is going to call all my moves blunders because g5 should be played. Like, every move, basically. <laughs> every move is a blunder. G5. G5 is necessary. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, honestly, there's nothing we can really do about this opening. It's going to happen. This is just the best that we've got. Bishop e6. It's not the best position, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Knight d5, again, g5 should be played. But there's not many uh, positions or openings at this level 
where you need to play g5. So this is a really big outlier case where g5 has been such a strong move the whole game. Usually if you play g5, you're going to get killed. So what you're looking at is the outlier, or at least I hope it is. <laughs> I hope it is. Otherwise, you might have to change that rule immediately. But I'm still pretty, still pretty confident in, in that rule. Stay away from g5. It's really hard to judge the, the repercussions of g5 properly. Why is g5 so strong? This, this pin is very annoying. So it's not that it might be strong here, but it's, it's strong here. It's strong here, basically, every single move. Because this pin means I can't move my queen without getting double pawns. And if I can't move my queen here, I have to keep it here. And you see, after I did this, I have no more moves left. I'm completely stuck. If I don't play g5, I can't move my knight. I can't move my queen. I can't move either rook to any better square. You see what I mean? Like, I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. It's easier to play g5 than deal with the pin the whole game. You're correct. But I'm talking about in other games, g5 is going to be a blunder. And you're going to play it because you've normalized playing it by playing it here. So what I'm saying is don't play it all together. You're going to have games that suck like this, but this is a big outlier and it's going to pay off that you don't play G5 in all your other games. There's no way. Okay. I was going to say, there's just no way. There's no way we get another Bishop C4. Okay. Takes, we're going to take with the D pawn. Does not take. Instead goes back. Aha. Aha. Okay. Knight, castle. No b5 either. Not That's not a, a special rule of any sort, no. I mean, I'm still not playing b5 here, but it's not because I can't do it or anything like that. Am I good at math? I don't think so. I mean, I was good in school. But I don't think, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to stop this. We're going like that. Um, but no, I, I don't think I'm good at math. I'm good at all the math I will need in my life. Put it that way. There's never been a situation in my life where I was like, damn, I didn't learn that math. So I don't know. And I'm just like malfunctioning on the spot. Probably bishop g4 is, is reasonable, but um, get the rook out to the middle. Why not bishop g4 before castling? There's no special rush to, to do it in general. Um, okay, so he does this. We can not actually take it because of the pin. So we're just going to take this bishop and move it back. And in moving it back, our opponent is actually unleashed. Very important thing, which we're going to look at after. Look at that, that is a pin, thanks to our rook there. So what is the best move in this position? I have talked about this before, but this is a very good example of it. The best move in this position is not gonna be losing your knight. The best move is gonna be moving your knight and losing your rook. I've gone over this a lot. The bottom line is you don't want to lose a knight, you'd rather lose the rook. And that sounds crazy, it's like the knight's worth three points, the rook's five. You have to think about what you're getting. Speaking of math, do the math. One for three, three for five. You know, the math checks out either way. All right. So it's the same, it's the same, it's the same trade, but do I want to give away something for free? I'm just going to be missing a knight and he has a knight. No, I always want to get something and then give something. I know it's a bad trade for me, rook for bishop, but at least I get something of his that he, he, that he doesn't have. Suddenly I have a bishop and he doesn't. I can try to use that to my advantage. That's called an imbalance. It's much better for me to have an actual imbalance to play with, even if it's worse than his, rather than he, he just is up a knight. And it's like, okay, I just, I'm just missing a knight from my position. That's not good. I'd rather be missing a rook, but he's missing a bishop. At least there's, at least there's a, a difference there. Blood Bones, thanks for the gift. It's up. Um, okay, he's so attacking our bishop. Let's uh, just keep it for the moment. Okay, bishop looking to trade, unfortunately. There's not much I can do about this. Generally speaking, I do not want to trade pieces, but I kind of kind of had to there. Not putting my bishop here. Um, okay, he's giving me a center pawn. I think that's, that's good. That's 
good. And remember, I'm probably going to bring this knight right back. I got to move my bishop out. I got to move my knight so I can get my queen up and bring my rook over. That's my next five moves game plan, you know? Thank you, Pillage and Blunder. Paoletto for the bits. Why don't I like trading? Because I'm down material. I just lost material. If I trade everything that's equal on the board here, it's not going not gonna to go well for me. Weak rook for strong bishop? No, has nothing to do with it. I don't think that bishop was strong, and I don't think that rook was weak either, for the record. <laughs> but no, that has nothing to do with that trade. What rating do I think is considered good? Uh, I've answered this question before. Um, sub-1500 is um, basically, you're not, a, you're not even a human being yet. And at 1800, I think you are confirmed a chess player. Let's get the bishop out. No, not in general, not trading. Just here, because I'm down material. So the first step is becoming a human being. And then becoming a chess player. 1500 and then 1800. Those are important milestones. Exactly, Squee. You are a molecule. You are nothing but a chess molecule in need of habits training. Oh, this is friendly. He's offering me a pawn. Thank you. Let's get that back. Basically, this is just like pickpocketing. Just yoink, my pawn now. Um, like I said, I'm going to move my knight. Well, actually, he just hung another pawn. I think I, like I could just keep taking I was going to go here and bring my queen and bring the rook, but I can take another pawn, so I'm going to do that. Okay, and I'm just going to go back to the same square. It exerts good pressure on the center. Does 1,500 in puzzles count? No, no. This is not the, this is not the stream where you're going to get... Uh, rosy compliments about um about your chess you're gonna get the real the real deal but we like to see improvement that's the one thing we like to see improvement and a lot of people have sent me uh their improvement charts from the beginning of habits till now which has been pretty uh which has been pretty cool to see E4. Okay, I'm just going to finish what I started, which was bringing the rook to the middle. Okay, B5. My opponent is doing some strange stuff. Have you noticed that he doesn't have any pawns? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, where are all the pawns that used to be over here? Didn't he have, like, all of them? Didn't he just lose, like, like five pawns? Where, where did they go? I swear to God, my opponent just lost, like, everything he owned. This is quite the mass that I've got here. This is like, I'm basically playing like Red Rover. Um, how to proceed? It's a good question. I think his move is not very good. Um, I know it's sort of against trading, but at this point, I got so many pawns, I'm winning now. So trading is actually a good thing. And it doubles his pawns. So I'm kind of a fan of it. Um, what I would do here, sort of best piece of advice, is not to worry about like, hanging on to all the pawns. Just pick the pawns that you know you do want to hang on to and stick with those. So I'm going to try my best to hang on to these three pawns if I can. Uh, I don't really care about this one. So I'm going to let it let it drop. If not, like if he piles everything on it, you know, he he gets it, man. He gets it. I'm going to defend uh, this pawn and probably look to push it. Push past pawns is always what I say is the kind of the easiest way to go. And again, I am giving that up, but I already I already came to terms with that. I already came to terms with that. Damn it. I trolled myself. I don't know why I dropped it there. I think I had it here, and I just, like, my mouse went over here for some reason. Um, I meant to play queen d6. <laughs> meant to play queen d6. Manners man, thanks for the three months. And news with the two months. Oh, and you got some improvement as well. Oh, he's attacking my rook. Let's put the queen where I should have put it last turn, and let's... 
Let me try to keep pushing. Two pawns, yeah. It's my turn to give away all five pawns. <laughs> Start the count. <laughs> my turn to give away all my pawns back. Okay. Whoa! What a move from Big Chief over there! Very nicely done. That was slick. That was slick. But you know what? I said I was going to keep all three pawns and I didn't do it. You know? it. I Not playing Queen D6. I don't know why I dropped that mouse there for some reason. But I was like this and I was like, Ugh. I deserved it for not keeping my pawns. Right? We, we left one guy behind. This guy just died for no reason. <laughs> this guy just died for no reason. Deserved loss. Why am I losing? Well, remember, this is not a this is not a speed run. I'm not really out here just trying to clap cheeks, stat sheets. You know, we're we're trying to clap cheeks while following the habits. What happened in the opening? I think it was more or less okay. C three, D four continues to hurt us, so kind of <laughs> have to watch out for that. But um, this was the issue. This was the issue. So good habit. Don't walk into a pin, you know, on purpose. Uh, B five could be played. Bishop d7 could be played first, and then it would all be okay. But yeah, basically, don't walk into a pin. That's the lesson. That is the lesson. And here, we made the right decision by going back. And d7 is best. There you go. But um, yeah, he lost one pawn, two pawns, three pawns, and then four pawns here, even though it was a trade. <laughs> the evaluation bar just went all the way zoop. And then it's going to come all the way back down. Watch this. <laughs> so we give away, give away uh, one pawn, two pawns. <laughs> Blunder. Rook f8, guys. Rook f8. Minus three. Queen d6 double question mark? You guys want to see double question mark? I think I think it's gonna be my next move. Missed win? How's that, a, how's that a missed win? I don't think it's a missed win. I think it's a I allowed a win. What does it mean missed win? I missed his win? <laughs> What's the game trying to tell me? I missed a win. <laughs> Queen takes g7 mate is best. We got a smurf over here. This is not going to be a well-played game. Yeah, I was going to say by either of us. We still had 81.3 because all of our blunders came at the end, I think. Let's hop back in here. Oh, we got a Canadian. This is going to be our ticket, guys. I can feel it. He's going to help us get back on the grind here. Canadians are always very friendly. Always very friendly. What opening did we say we were playing against the Karakhan? Does anyone remember? That's right. It is the two knights. Two knights. Bishop there. Stick with the habits. H3. Oh, he takes. That's friendly. And what do we want to do? We want to take the middle of the board. Okay, get a pawn, and then something like bishop here. One thing I said, don't play this move, okay? If he plays bishop here, I might play it because it's a fork, but otherwise, I'm going to stay away from it. Why? I don't want to close the position. I'm, generally speaking, I want to keep it open, okay? Open. Let's go A3. I said that was pretty much what we're going to do all the time. Um, and stuff like that. Okay, takes. Okay, he goes knight there. I'm, I'm going to move my bishop back here. Uh, I think he should have taken it. Generally speaking, I'm pretty interested in keeping that bishop. So I'm just going to bring it back to safety. And the rook's going to go here. This rook, where should this rook go? I would say this is a pretty good, pretty good one. The center is always good, but I, I would say like rook b1, rook e1 is kind of the option. Guys, what have I told you about b5? We already went over this today. b5, what's the move? It's a4. Like every time we've seen this, this has been a very strong reply. So th this is no it, this is no different. Like a4 is extremely strong here. You just get in the habit of doing that. Um, it's going to help you a lot. Queen c6, no, a4 better. A4 better. A4. A4 is life, baby. Let's take that. 
And we, now we open up this, uh, this rook on the pawn. Seriously, though, uh, I, I do prefer a4 than taking the pawn there. Hello, Ethan. White to play. White to play. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Check, baby. And say hello to my little friend. There we go. That's a discovered check. Discovered attack. However you want to call it. This is a great tactic. Very, very common. We baited him in with rook takes c3. I told you, the Canadians, they're friendly. This is our rebound game. We're bouncing back here. So how are we going to continue? Well, trades are good. We know that. Um, this bishop needs to develop. Okay, bishop needs to develop. Trades are good. You know, got to finish developing this rook as well. So bishop, where do we want to put it? Where do we want to put it? Uh, can't actually put it there. Um, this square, this square, this square. This one looks a little soft. I can go here, but generally speaking, I'm going to stick to the trend of developing our bishop on this diagonal. We've been doing it in every single game we played, so let's not change that. Um, this looks like the more active square, but it does run into knight d5. I, I would say bishop f4 is still okay, but um, I like I like bishop b3. It's just solid defensive um, of this pawn because it's very important. And okay, it goes there. We got to move our queen. Stay close to the middle here. But I think uh, these two would both be okay. Um, if you guys suggest that th these moves, like bishop a3, it's a great move. Um, I'm just going to stick with this, as I said, habit of uh, bishop developing on that diagonal. So, Okay, this rook. Uh, doubling on an open file. You're, you're not going to be making a mistake doing that. Bishop b3 runs into knight d5 fork as well, but it is protected. It's a little safer. But definitely, definitely he could have still played that. Would have been a good move. Yep, exactly, Joe. You got the hang of it. Bishop b3 also guards the pawn so that my queen doesn't have to guard the pawn, so my queen can move around. Probably one of the... I don't know if it what the right way to say this is, but um, very important things that I learned at some point um, was overprotection. And what is overprotection? So in this position, my pawn is attacked. So it only needs to be defended by one thing. But if I defend this pawn with, let's say, all my pieces, and what it means is that every single one of my pieces can leave the defense of that pawn. So if I'm just defending with the queen, the queen's defending, the queen can never move. If I'm defending with the bishop and the queen, it means either the bishop or the queen can leave whenever they want because it's defended. So the idea of overprotection is not that it needs to be protected, but that it frees up all your pieces to potentially move whenever they need to. They can't all move at the same time, but they can all move individually. So it looks like you're wasting time defending one thing, but, and I will play this, this is a discovered attack, but it allows all your pieces to move. Very important, uh, very important theme. Uh, let's continue. Hello, Chloe. A8 trade. Yeah, A A8 trade for sure. Um, this is a very good move here. Generally speaking, queen for two rooks is not what we want. Um, so I'm going to avoid playing it because generally giving away two rooks to the queen is not good. The reason it's good here is because of this. However, we have a few other moves we can do here, which I'm going to execute. Um, I like this one. It's a pin. Nice and simple chess. It's a pin. It's going to be a trade if you somehow manage to get out of this. Looks good for us. We're already got material. Again, I'm not debating. Uh, this move is a great move here. It's a winning move. Um, maybe not winning, but it's a very strong move. But it's, it's a move that allows queen for two rooks. So I'm just going to stay away from it. I think bishop... C5 is more fundamentally solid. It um, pins the knight to the rook. It takes advantage of my queen sort of pinning that knight to the queen. 
It's a much more logical move. I'm not, obviously not going to waste my time taking that queen. I'm just going to let my buddy over here resign. <laughs> I'm going to let him think about what he's done. There we go. If anyone's wondering, he hung his queen there at the end. Okay. We're going to play this uh, opening. <laughs> Yoked Nando 6. We got to look at this guy's account. Yoked Nando 6. Holy smokes, I'm playing a Giga Chad. Oh my god. Yoked Nando. Oh my goodness. Jeez. This is the type of guy that beats up guys like me. That guy? That guy slaps your girl on your ass. What you doing? Chat, what we, what we doing if he's slapping our girl? How we feeling about that? Oh my goodness. Of course, of course he plays knight g5. He's a giga chad. He's, he's sending it already. He's sending it already. Oh my goodness. What, do, you guys, do you guys think he's going to move the knight away if I do this? There's only one way to find out. But like, I have a feeling he could be cooking something real spicy up. He doesn't look like he's okay with knight, G, knight f3. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's, he's sending it, he's sending it, boys. I mean, it's very clear. He's not about to play knight f3. He wouldn't be yoked Nando if he didn't take on f7. There's no chance. No chance. But we can use that against him. You know what I mean? If you know you're playing against a yoke Nando, it's kind of like, you know, the charging bull and the matador, right? I know he's going to play the most aggressive moves at all times. So we're going to use that against him. Okay, there's a very aggressive move. That's fine. We're not going to overreact. We're not going to get psyched out. He wants to trap my bishop. Is that going to happen? No. We, whenever we see this for, for a5, we always just make some space for our bishop. We're not going to get psyched out. Bishop there. Boys, this was a good trade for me. I'm going to go, I'm going to go uh, take that. Okay. Let's just hide, hide our king. That's like very important when your king, for some reason, ventures out by force. Tuck him right back in. All right. Tuck him right back in. You don't want to be, you know, very exposed uh, in front of everyone. Think of it this way. King in the middle is like having a boner in class, right? Boom, boner pops up. What the fuck? Teacher. Uh, Amon, you want to come to the front of the class and I show your work? You got to do the tuck technique, right? Just flip it right up into that boxer line. Boys, you know what I'm talking about. You got to hit him with that tuck technique, all right? So we're going to tuck it right back in. Tuck it right back in. Back to g8. Bishop g4, that's a pin. That's a pin. Big Chad move. Expect it from Yoke Nando. Tuck it in. Flip it up right into that boxer line, boys. Tuck it right up. Okay, rook g3. An expected move, but we're not going to let it phase us. We're going to stick to the habits. Queen up. Want to get the rook over to the open file. Okay, bring the bishop back. No worries. Of course, we bring the bishop back. We're actually threatening his queen as well. And you know what? The rook's coming over here. Open file. Open file. He's probably going to like do something like this. You know what I mean? The yoke Nando, he's, he's trying to mate me right here. I, I can see it in his eyes. I, I can see it in his eyes. All right? Continue. Pawn move. In the middle of the board. Let's go. Oh, cheese, my dude. Ooh, ooh. Yikes. That's a yikes on cheese. Come on, cheese. That's a one second uh, timeout on cheese. He'll be right back, no doubt. Okay. Capture, reasonable. Um, we gotta move our knight. I'm gonna choose the central square. The, these ones aren't available. This is the next best. So I'm gonna play knight e7. What did cheese say? Uh, his, his, his energy is, uh, is just way up there at the moment. We're, we're trying, to, trying to give him a, a, a tranquilizer. That's what Queen's Gambit has taught me. That's how I handle the plebs. The same way Beth Harmon was handled with tranquilizers. Plebs and one month subs. They're, they're starting to, to merge into the same beast. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's hard to tell the difference these days. Okay, Rook takes pawn. He doesn't care about me taking his pawns. Ooh, an expected Giga Chad move. B6, he's taking advantage of the pin. 
He's taking advantage of the pin. Are we going to be afraid of that? No, let's just guard our pawn. No worries. You are one month sub cheese, and Dan doesn't look good on you. There's a reason that the one month sub is a gray logo, by the way. You know, it's just like, it's almost like TV static. It's like you're, you're waiting for your actual sub icon to load, basically. The two month sub is where you come into your, your own. You know what I mean? That's when we know you're here to stay. Um, let's get out of this pin. I might just even go here. Let's get out of the pin. One month gang. One month gang. Sub to all my one monthers. Any one monthers? I was never a one month sub. I started at two months. I was never a filthy one month sub. I just jo I joined uh, immediately for two months. Yeah, yeah, the two month green badge. That's that's when we know you're real. What up, Kilimanjaro? What about one month tier threes? Uh, I don't know. That's just like, that's, that's like catfishing. That's like catfishing. Um, okay. Big respect to Queen A8. Big respect. Let's block the check. Yeah. One month tier threes. It's like, is, is you know, it's just like putting makeup on. I, I know what's up. I know what's up. Big respect for the chat energy we're seeing. That knight is attacked. That knight is attacked. How are we going to handle our friend here? If we move that knight, the pawn is loose. He's converging. So it, it should tell us that, hey, we can't move this knight. We, we should keep it where it is. How do I keep it where it is? Well, I have to defend it. Because I know if I move this thing, this guy's going to explode. Like, my God, he probably has a pre-move, by the way. Probably has a pre-move. He is absolutely going to explode on G7. We have to handle the yoked Nando. He's going to do something a little bit too aggressive soon. He's playing some great moves, though. I'm a big fan. Big fan of the chess. Uh, let's move this queen somewhere. I have to watch out for this. He's very, very yoked right now. Like I said, the yoked Nando. We knew we knew this was possible. We knew this was possible. We just had to stay in the game long enough for it to happen. We knew that this was the case. Like I said, he's going to do something way too aggressive. He's yoked Nando. We were waiting for that move. Let's move our queen. Uh, let's hit his rook. He might even just blunder it. Okay, so how are we going to win this game? What's our thought process? Let's play that pawn to support that. And you know what? He's going to miss this, isn't he? Yoke Nando has there's no way he's a zero chance. Zero chance. Zero chance. Yoke Nando. He's only thinking aggro. Yep. Boom. Yoke Nando is done. Boys, he's cooked. He's cooked. For sure he goes here. It's a very yoked move. Guys, oh, we got him. We got him. We got him. We're going all the way here. We're going all the way. Okay, we want to control that square. Push that pawn. Oh, we got him, boys. We got him. Yoke Nando is going down. Yep, there's no chance. We got him. We took him down. Just have to wait, guys. Just have to stay patient, stay in there. Stay patient, stay in there. Yoke Nando was bound to do a move like that at some point. We knew it was possible. We knew he was capable of that. This is the guy that beat you up in high school. You know, in elementary school. And look at you now with the habits. Now you get to stuff him in the locker. U.S. Army Paratrooper. 
So do you guys uh do you guys know what a paratrooper is? Okay, let's remember our opening. Okay, we're gonna go knight here. Someone who parachutes into combat. Acceptable answer. Acceptable answer. Acceptable. Keep the tension. Keep the tension. That's what we're doing in this opening, guys. Knight T2 is the Tarash. This is what we're playing against the French. Um, and we're going to keep the tension. Like I said, no closed positions, okay? We're, we're trying to keep things open. Takes, take it back, okay? If he takes, we take back. If he takes our pawn, we win his queen. Like the, Probably you'll have about 20 people are going to do that. U.S. Army Paratrooper has disconnected. <laughs> well, look, looks like he just dropped out. <laughs> Oh, he's back. He's back. There we go. <laughs> okay, C5. C5. Bad connection at the base. So, so I'm glad we, we, we see C5 because um, it's one of the trickier moves for keeping the tension. It's very hard to keep the tension here, right? Um, but we are, I'm going to play a move and I'm going to explain it um, afterwards. But uh, taking this... Not really something I want to do because I don't want to help him develop in a single move. Okay, so I'm going to play this. We'll see what he does. Mill Wi-Fi, yeah. But we'll explain it after. Uh, basically trying to keep as much tension as possible. See what he decides to take. Fork on e4. I mean, he can capture it. Um, I can capture it back, however. He's, he's definitely got some moves here, but I'm, I'm playing the man. Basically, I assume that um, he, he might just disconnect. So we're playing, playing the man here. I'm playing a paratrooper. I might just win this game by disconnection. Chef Boyer D, thanks for the five months. <laughs> okay, guys, I really put him out with this move. You see this? My man, man, man is literally in like a war zone or something. Where, where is he? He's not even here. Oh, he disconnected. You see, he's dropping again. took and f3 is tricky yes you know why it's tricky because he's gonna take my knight i told you guys i told you guys easy clap and he's out of there get him out of here so Let's let's analyze because we haven't seen the French a lot, so uh, it it may be a little bit more fresh for some of you guys. Ninety two point four. Let's go. So um, we want to keep the tension. This is simply the the variation that I'm choosing for habits. So hey, you don't like it? Play something else. But this is the one that I'm choosing. Okay, ninety two. Um, guarding e4, bishop d3, supporting it again. No closed positions. Do not play e5. Try to avoid it. At least that's what I recommend. Um, here, I could take it. Um, I decided to go here. Not a great move. Not a great move. Um, why is it not a great move? The engine uh, points it out here. c4. Okay, he can go pawn here. Okay, why is this so good? Because after pawn there, I'm going to move my bishop, and he can take this pawn. And after he takes this pawn, he can take this pawn. 
Okay, so my, my whole center just kind of disappears. Okay, my whole center disappears. But I honestly thought there was a very good chance that he would blunder into exactly what we just looked at, um, which is why I played it. And I said we would look at it after. So why is my move not good? Because of c4. c4 is very strong. Okay, what do we need to play instead of knight there? What do we need to play instead? Maintain the tension. Don't close the position. What are we supposed to play here? Yes, thank you. C3. We need to play C3. Okay? We'll take back with the pawn, and then we'll bring the knight out. Okay? And we want to try to avoid E5. So stick with me. You'll get open positions. There'll be more tactics. Play C3. Play this position. Bring the knight out. Castle. Eventually, you know, he'll do this. He'll probably blunder his queen again, you know? So, C3. Anyways, we got a nice quick win there, opening trap, but when you guys play it, uh, play c3 and then bring your knight out and castle and keep the position open. You'll have more tactics and guarantee you'll have a more interesting game. Let's get back into it. Guys, I told you, the, do you remember when I said the Canadian was going to turn our day around? We won that game. We beat some yoked guy. We took down a paratrooper. And we've been sending her ever since. Okay, <clears throat> knight's out, um, bishop. Oh, we got one of these guys. Yeah, <laughs> we got one of those. Okay, we always said we were going to play a6 if that move happens, so let's go. And remember, after, the, okay, attacking our bishop, let's save it. Let's save it. Okay, and he's threatening bishop there. Let's prevent it. We've talked about this. Okay, castling. He goes knight there. We have seen this tactic before. Can anyone assist me here? Can anyone assist me here? I see some g5s. I see some uh, knight d5s. It should be knight e4. Knight e4. Okay. You might say, hey, that's a sacrifice. If it's part of a tactic, that is okay. A lot of tactics are born from sacrifices. When I say sacrifice, I mean, you know, no, bishop takes h3 or something, open up the king. This is part of a tactic. We're playing knight takes e4, queen takes h4. At the end of the day, we want a pawn there. I know it's not much, but a pawn's a pawn. A pawn is a pawn. So here, bishop takes h3. Maybe that would be a good move, but that's exactly the type of thing we are not going to look to play. Let's get developed. Bishop e6. Okay, brings the knight back. Um, I would say moves in the center, rooks to the middle, um, rook e8, rook d8, solid chess. Solid chess. f5, definitely a strong move, but not really a move that uh, we've ever done before, and I think we're going to keep it simple. We are going to keep it nice and simple here. Here we go. Okay, rook d1. We do want to play this, but our pawn will be hanging. So something to uh, help us out. Maybe like queen here, for example, uh, to guard this. Rook d8, rook b8, how do I decide? Rook b8 would have been a great move. The reason I decided on this is because I decided on the plan of pushing. So I wanted the rook there to support it. A rook b8 would be a great move as well. I would only bring a rook to the center here, though, if I actually had a plan to do this. If I, if I wasn't going to do this, I don't like this as much. Okay, he goes here. He goes here. Let's capture. Okay, rook takes. Queen's got to move. Um, I think center of the board options are always going to be a little bit nicer, so I'm going to choose this one. How do you have a sub you don't even follow? But my dude, the chat's in follower only mode.
Definitely Blood Latte. Definitely does, but sort of how we've been playing the habits. Um, king. King. Maybe pawn push in the middle. It's not going to be our finest work, but this makes sense. But the, the honest truth is that um, the, the gift subs that come in, people literally run out of people to gift too. Like, <laughs> at some point, everyone in chat's been gifted. Everyone who was previously subs, you know what I mean? Like, we've hit all the categories. We have 16,000 subs. At some point, it's just like Oprah. It's just like you get it. Like, they just pick people out of nowhere. You know what I mean? So, I see your username is Dick Ass Man Jr. So, like I said, that they, they, they pick them from random places on Twitch. Like, they... They found you somewhere watching some stream. And they were like, you know what? Get this guy in a chest bra. He needs to, he needs to know what this channel's about. Um, painful move, right? Utilizing a pin there. Take that back. That name is welcome here. Exactly. Okay, he uh, blocks my little tricky idea. I'm going to play c5 to support the pawn there. Good move by my opponent. Um, don't really have, like, you know, splendid moves to play here. I'm just going to kind of toss some pawns, bring my queen back into the middle of the board. King back in the middle is actually not unreasonable here. I might do that as well. Thank you, uh, 926. Andy. This guy is playing well. Yes, I agree. I agree. He started with some sort of timid moves, and finally he brings the king back. That's very, very good to see. Oh, okay. That's not very good to see. I don't know what move that is. Oh. We'll keep, keep things central for the moment. Ooh. So, so, I think our opponent has identified something that works. Okay. E3, no, C4. We don't want to trade queens. We're down material, right? I think our opponent has identified something that works, which is pinning me. Taking all my stuff. Right? He's taking my H-pawn. He had the fork earlier. Um, let's take here, because you know what? If I have a pass pawn, at least that's a plan. At least it's a plan. Okay, let's take this guy. Two pass pawns. I don't have a lot of time. So let's push him. You know, just push him. That's the best I can do. Okay. Got 14 seconds here, but I'm almost pre-moving this stuff. D2, D1. It's, it's the best chance I have. Best chance I have here. Okay. Queen there attacking my rook. Very sneaky, actually. Uh, I'm going to go in the center of the board. Still hitting the queen. Okay, we're just going to do this because we got to pre-move, pre-move, pre-move. Uh, let's go here to help this pawn push. Let's go. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, damn it. Oh, let's attack this guy. Okay. Uh, let's pre-move that in case he does it. Just in case. Oh, let's take that. Pre-move that just in case. Oh, he did it. Okay, let's make a pre-move. Let's make a pre-move. Let's make a pre-move. You should be able to pre-move all moves here. Make a pre-move. If you don't know what to do, just move your king. Pre-move. If you don't know what to do, just, just move your king. You know, if you're trying to think or gather some time, it's like, okay, move the king. Okay, okay. Just gather some, some time to think. Pre-move, pre-move, pre-move. All moves, pre-move. I need to advance my pawn. 
This is going to be my little construction. You see, I, I'm going to advance the pawn up the board this way. One, two, one, two. Okay, and go here. We're going to get a queen. And do I have enough time to set up a checkmate? Oh, actually, I do. Luckily, it's a force mate in uh, three. Mm, that didn't work as well as I thought it was going to work. Thought it was going to be a little slick there. Didn't quite pay off. But you know what? Didn't want to do my man A. James dirty because you know what? You know what? He played a great game. And that would have been a very impressive, impressive checkmate. You know? The fact that we earned a draw, that's good enough. That's good enough. However, my pre move advice still stands. Okay? Pre move something that might happen just in case it does. Like this pre move. Right? That's a safe pre move. If he doesn't take this pawn, it's going to cancel and then I can make a normal move. So, optimal strategy in this position, in my opinion, would be to pre move this. Pre-move that, and then grab your king and hover this. So if he takes it, it's pre-moved. This is a, a safe hover, because he also might check me. He also might check me. So I want to have this hovered. So that's like optimal game theory strategy at the end. Okay, here. Like I said, good piece of advice. If you're pre-moving and things are starting to get chaotic, just, just move, a, move a king or something. If you're not sure what to expect, you don't know what he's going to do, just like move your king, and it gives you time to catch up with the position and start to understand what's going on and what you might need to do. And sooner you'll get better at pre-moving. You won't need to make those king moves because they're, they're going to be a waste of time. Okay, let's get another game. Seriously, though, he played very well. I'm going to look at the analysis just to see the accuracy. Um, I thought he played a good game. I'm not sure if it will necessarily be reflected with the accuracy because the end of the game was a little bit sloppy. Um, so I think there will actually be a lot of, a lot of blunders, yeah. Um, I thought he played well. I thought he played well. He had his moments. Um, he Basically, the reason I thought he played well is because of this. Um, started with these. Not a fan. However, if you look at um, his game, this is a very easy thing to fix. Habits? Dude, knights on the side? No. Very easy fix. Both of these knights should absolutely be there. <laughs> very simple fix. Okay, falls into a tactic. You know, and then he's got he's got good fundamentals. He's bringing the pieces to the middle. He's looking to open things up. Um, he hit me with a nice tactic here that he saw. Boom. Right? And then I thought these moves here were all fantastic. Look at this. King G1. That, that, that whole sequence from him was really good. And then here, I think he sort of like went off the beaten path a little bit with this. Um, yeah, because this was a little shaky. And then, yeah, there were a lot of blunders here. But I um, thought he played well. Um, slamp key. All right. Do e4. What, what's he going to do? E5 guy. All right. Start with the knights, as we always have been. Um, get that bishop out. Habits. H3. Oh. Okay. We've seen this fork before. It's okay. We bring the queen back. No big deal. No big deal. We castle. Grania 07, thanks again for the four months. Uh, any chance of making the board purple? It's a real big deal to your three-year-old daughter. Thanks. Uh, no, no chance. Um, okay, here, let's bring the rook to the middle. Okay, bishop back. So, um, I will tell you, Grenya, and if you are watching with your three-year-old daughter, um, shout out to the daughter. They always say that the number one channel to get your kids involved in, in, in Twitch chess, is the chess bra channel. Just known to have that welcoming spirit um, really kid friendly. So we'd love to hear that. However, I will tell you why I cannot change it to purple. I will tell you why I cannot change it to purple. Um, number one, 
especially last night. Exactly. I hope, I hope, I hope you guys were tuned in last night as well. Um, knight had to move. Didn't have central squares. Bishop. I'm just going to continue to have it here as well. But um, I can't have it purple because right now the chessboard has been the same way for a long time. So people can identify with it. If they're comfortable with it, even if they don't like it, it's the same. People don't like change. I'm going to change it to purple. And, and everyone's going to be like, ah, it's purple. Ah, I can't see where the pieces are. Oh, my God. Okay. And then might change it later to another color. And people are going to get all mad again. They were changing it again. So I have to just leave it as one thing and just force you guys to like it. Even if you don't like it, it's like, all right, that's what it is. Just have to leave it here. Okay, so it's, it's, uh, it's, for, it's for the people. It's for the people. We like purple, says Orbis. <laughs> we like purple, says Orbis. Uh, incorrect. You like purple. And maybe that guy likes purple. Oh, maybe they like purple. But you know what? You're not going to like it for more than one game. We've done it before. It's true. We have done it before. Uh, rook to the middle. Okay. Solid. Pull. Okay. You guys want a pull? Let's do a pull. Let's do a pull. I don't mind a pull. Should we change the board color to purple? All right, let me know. Um, let's continue to improve the night. I will, guys. If if uh, if the if the results say so in the poll, I will change it. I will change it. You know what I mean? I'm I'm honest. This is a, a channel where I'd like to think democracy rules. You know. So based on the result of the vote, I'll check the answer. Uh, we will, we will change the the color to purple. You know, if you guys want it, only if you guys want it. Um, okay, let's try to push pawns in the center. So let's go C three here. Only if you guys want it. Uh, the 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 votes in the chat. So just the vote in the chat there. Um, should be a drop down menu. Should we change the board color to purple? Okay, like I said, let's, boom, let's go. We want that center push. So I'm just going to focus on this game for now, but I will check the results when I'm done. Let's keep the queen in the middle. Keep the queen in the center. Not a strong move. Where can I put my queen? Not many squares. Not many squares. Let's bring the queen back. Ooh, guys, queen for two rooks. We get to finally practice this. I don't think we've ever had this so far. This is great, actually. This is really good. I'm glad this happened. I'm looking at the vote right now, and actually, it looks like no is actually winning. Oh, man. I, I thought you guys were going to vote yes for the three-year-old daughter. I mean, I kind of expected better. You know what I mean? From you guys. Like, I thought that you guys would want to change the color to purple. Oh, my goodness. And the, the answer is no way. The answer is no way. So I thought you guys, from the bottom of your hearts, there's a three-year-old daughter watching you want to change the color. I, I, was, I was open to it. I even did the poll. But you guys, I mean, oh, ridiculous. Ridiculous. Sorry, sorry, uh, sorry about that, um, Grania07. I mean, we just did a vote, and the people said no. Sorry, man. Just did a vote. Um, let's uh, let's double these rooks. Let's uh, let's give a check and double these rooks. There we go. There's a plan. Okay, let's go here. Now I'm scaring the baby. Loud noises. Uh, it's a three-year-old daughter. Right? It's not a baby. It's a three-year-old daughter that watches chess, bro. I'm sure she's yoked. Ooh, this is a, uh, this is a mistake. This is a mistake. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Slanky, that is a great, great thing for me. Let's see if we can win. So let's go for a trade. Let's go for a trade. Oh, trades are good. 
Guys, trades are good. What do we say we do in the end game? Attack. Okay, attack. We have a dark squared bishop. So what, what's the first thing I'm going to do? I'm going to take all my pieces. And I'm going to put them on light squares. <laughs> Just like make that a, the number one thing you do. Okay, light squares. And we're going to push our pawn. Let's go home, baby. Let's go home. All the way down. Okay, all the way down the board. Activate the king attack pawns. No, remember guys. If you're in the end game, you're up a lot of material. You just want to promote a pawn. Hey! Hey! Stop that. Okay, we got our pawn promoted. There we go. Okay, now we have to execute a checkmate. Uh, check. Oh, that was a powerful check. <laughs> that was a powerful check. But seriously, put your pieces on light squares. The bishop will never be able to take them. It means you can pre-move. It's Lamkey. GG. Okay, e4. Aries Gaming for the girls. That's why we got that uh, bad emote. Absolutely. Discovered Checkmate. Just followed the channel. So he subbed before he even followed. That's someone who knows what they're doing. You know what I mean? That's someone who definitely knows. That's someone who definitely knows what they want in life. Okay, we're going to keep the... Keep the development nice and simple here. Uh, bishop there um, actually does make a threat, which is important to notice. We will bring the bishop out. And Kaiser Soze with 100 gifted subs. And you know, Kaiser Soze, he just sent me a very nice message. Thank you for including that. Kaiser, he said 100 subs because you, you didn't make the board purple. You see, guys? Thank you, Kaiser. That is, that is just a beautiful message along with those 100 gifted subs. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. Kaiser Soze, guys, with 100 gifted subs. He, the man has spoken. The man has spoken. Guys, 100 gifted subs from Kaiser. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. He says, never purple. You see, I didn't make that up. There he is. Kaiser, how are you, man? I don't know if you've been catching these habits series, Kaiser Soze. Uh, let's get rid of that. That bishop, but we're in the middle one right now. We're in the middle one right now. Everyone here is a sub. You get a sub. You get a sub. You get a sub. Let's castle. What's this opening by black? It's called the Owens defense. And uh, that's exactly what it gets. O wins. We're about to put it in the dirt. Trust. Let's bring the rook to the middle. Monsieur Charles says, I want to unsubscribe just to be an outsider now. Monsieur Charles, I uh, I don't think uh, I don't think you need to unsubscribe for that to be the case, buddy. Come on, Monsieur Charles. Seen the inside of a few lockers in your day? Let's go A5. Um, okay, let's get the pieces out. Bishop G5. And we get to use something very important here. A pin coupled with the very important move E5. Why is e5 so important? We're attacking the knight, and the knight can't move because it's pinned. It's a great type of tactic to keep in mind. Um, takes there. We're going to take back. We obviously don't want to double up our pawns. Um, thanks again, Kaiser Soze. I mean, I, I hope there's uh, truly enough thank yous going around in the chat for Kaiser. Came in here, played, um, played the house, basically. Played... Played, uh, played the house. I don't know if he won or lost, but there's 100 gifted subs going to the house, so I feel like the house won. Thank you, Kaiser, for the 100 gifted subs. Big, big time energy. Kaiser's a big supporter of the channel, always has been, so thank you, man. Okay, so this has happened. I went back because, hey, if I took his name, he's going to take my bishop. And what I'm actually going to show you here is something that I don't think we would all do, which is bishop h4. Now, the reason that I did that is that um, when I take the knight, 
I'm going to lose my bishop, but it's a little bit different now because I have checkmate. We just win the game. Okay, so a bit of a sneaky move there, but um, I am a fan all the time of forcing or getting our opponents to play g5. Getting our opponents to play g5. This is a very bad move. There's a reason why, and I know we've had a game today where it kind of looks tough. You're like, hey, how come you're not playing g5, dude? It's so good. And I know I missed it. It was a good move. However, g5 is normally a very weakening move. This is the perfect example. Um, if I took this knight here, they take back. I mean, it's, it's a good position. It's a good position. But it's not great. It's not great. Could be better. This is a lot stronger. Now they can't take my bishop because of mate. So they either let my bishop uh, escape or they get mated, which is what happened in the game. There we go. So I'm just saying g5. There's an example right there of it not working out. But pinning and then attacking that pin piece with a pawn, great habit. That's always going to always gonna work out for you. Hey guys, just a reminder that Building Habits is going to be a regular series on our YouTube channel. So make sure to get subscribed if you are not already. Drop a comment down below for the algorithm and let me know what you thought about the video. See you next time.